NFL fans, it is time for the playoffs. Maybe not here locally, but hey, Falcons, we're not going to forget you. Uh, special edition Impact Media NFL Playoff Edition. I finally get a chance, although I thought about it. I think we did work one time together, but uh, it was years ago. Yeah, it was uh, four score and, and 12 years ago, probably something like that. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I decided to bring in a special guest. He is uh, my good buddy, Daniel Snyder. Not uh, He did not own the commanders at any point. He is way better than that guy. But uh, Daniel, yeah, how you doing? not that guy. Uh, I, man, I'm good. I'm always good. Every day above ground, but Exactly. And as you can tell, he is a 49er fan. And, and a lot of my audience knows that I am a Cowboys fan. I don't think I have anything within reach. I don't hold that against him. I mean, I mean, I don't, I don't have Cowboys, but um, if you're a Cowboys fan, the champ is always here. <laughs> Got to keep that in range. Love that, love that. But as I said, this is a special edition. Maybe, maybe we do a couple more of these because there is a lot more playoffs to talk about. But first, as I said, uh, tell everybody a little bit about your, uh, your YouTube channel as well. We're gonna do a little cross promotion here. Um, um, my YouTube uh, channel is pretty much, uh, just me streaming, um, Call of Duty. Um, I, I do some Madden and I do some MLB the show. Um, it's real easy to look up Daniel Snyder. I think it's eight, six, three, one. It is all one. Um, I have, uh, over a hundred videos every single time I'm on, I'm live. I don't pre-record. I've got, uh, over, I've got anywhere between 200 to 500 hours of, of gameplay that I have on there. Um, I believe my longest was this year's Black Friday. I did uh, 14 straight hours, just straight Call of Duty wow. team death match with my crew. Yeah. So um, um, I have a fun time. Um, there's some um, uh, some exciting uh, language in there. So I'd say, kids, be careful. Um, but uh, it's, it's a fun time. Um, I, I pick on myself and I pick on my two buddies that I'm always playing with all the time. We're just over there talking smack. And it's just a lot of fun. It's re- It's just Three grown men playing a kid's game, not caring if we win or lose. It's just having a good time. That's what it is. And I'm trying to grow the YouTube channel. Uh, I'm going to start doing other stuff. But right now, that's mostly what it is. Absolutely. And uh, and like I said, uh, through basically my original ventures into this media stuff, um, as I stepped away from said venture, uh, you stepped in and, and uh, more than, than filled my shoes. It wasn't very hard. I like to leave the bar as low as possible uh, where it's just hey. more- Billy and Bryce make it easy, man. You know, we both just just played tag along. That's what we did. Oh, yeah, Yeah. we absolutely did. But let's get into some stuff real quick because there are six amazing games this weekend. But here locally, the Atlanta Falcons, hey, fans, I'll give you this. You were loud, and Arthur Blank, your owner, heard you. You said, we need a new quarterback. We'll see about that. You said, we need another owner or another uh, head coach. We don't like this guy. He got rid of the head coach. So, you know, we, we both went through that as, as uh, NFL fans before going through coaches. But, yeah, uh, you know, yeah, what's yeah. kind of your what's kind of your overall thought about the Falcons and where they're at right now? Um, You know, some people would say that they didn't meet uh, what they expected. I think they exceeded. Uh, I did not expect them to be playing with a possibility to be in the playoffs in the last uh, game of the year. Um. They, uh, if they would have beat New Orleans and Tampa Bay would have stumbled, which they almost did, Atlanta would have been in the playoffs. Um, so the simple fact that they were competitive, I give them that. I don't 100% blame Arthur Smith for them sucking. I'm, I'm pretty sure he didn't help, uh, but I, it's not 100% on him. There's they. I'm not a fan of, of Kyle Pitts, but I don't think they're using him the right way. It's not like he has a quarterback that can throw to him. That offensive line is shaky. Uh, there's there's no one wide receiver. I mean, London is, but it's kind of hard for London to be anything when – once again, it starts with your, with your quarterback, dude. And, I mean, it is what it is. And that defense was sometimes there and sometimes not. Like, the whole team still needs some needs work. It is what it is. But they were competitive this year, and that's, I guess, all you can ask for, that very weak division. Yeah, I, I thought I thought if Ritter couldn't handle it, that Heineke was going to. I like Heineke. I think he's a, a good, solid player. Apparently, all they had was two backups this year. They didn't really have an actual Legit. starter. And, and that showed. Uh, they have trouble on the offensive line. The defense actually held them in some games, but yeah, there was a couple times they cost them games too. And 
we'll have to see. There's a lot of magical names that they reached out to today to get interviews. Um, the only one I'm going to mention is the one I've mentioned all along. Uh, bring Raheem Morris back. They, I, he was one of the best coaches you've had in a long time. He understands the division. He understands the area. Yeah, he's a defensive guy, but I'd like to see who he bring in as an offensive coordinator. What about Pete Carroll? He's now no, now no longer the head coach of Seattle. Or Belichick. I mean, that's been rumored. Hey, Belichick. Yeah, and, and there's a possibility. Well, I mean, he's not going to be be free this year, but next year the Pittsburgh's a head coach. You know, he said after this year he's going to step down possibly for a year, and get himself together. That's what I heard. So yeah, that, that I guy mean, can get a job whenever he wants. Mike Tomlin is uh, one of the best coaches. Yes, yes. Um, so I mean, and do, doesn't Atlanta have the sixth overall pick? I think this year six, in the draft, six, seven, eight, somewhere in there. They're, they're so, yeah. I, I, and I can almost guarantee um, who's got number one on Chicago. Yes. Does Chicago? I, I, I mean, I yes. could see Chicago Chicago trading that number one pick to move back some if you give them your number one plus some others. So anybody that's interested in that number one pick to possibly grab the future quarterback that you need, that's available as well. I mean, so it's it's going to be an interesting offseason. You know, I, I told I told a couple of Falcons fans this the other day. Some of them liked it. Some of them didn't. This will kind of be our piece on them before we talk about the games. If you want to move up from six, seven, eight, wherever you're at, I think it's eight. But if you yeah, want to move up from eight. from eight to the top three, it's going to cost you at least a first rounder. It's going to cost you a couple and some other, maybe other years, you know, other rounds. But it's probably going to cost you Kyle Pitts. So Kyle, I'd Pitts give him up. First. He's not being used. I, give I him agree. up. That's you don't know. What, you don't know what to do. You don't know what to do with him. Exactly. And that's that's what I told him. I was like, look, you're already not using him, so it's not like you're going to miss him. And you could draft his replacement the fifth round. So that's what easy, I would Easy, easy, easy. I agree. I'm with you on that. I like that. But there's a lot of upside, and that's what I try to tell him. I was like, it's not all doom and gloom. Atlanta, you're not that far off from being a playoff team. You just – you need a head coach, you need a quarterback, and you need a, a, a couple depth pieces, really. I agree. But, uh, we, you know, Falcons fans, we want to lead off because I, I, I talk about them all year long. But we just wanted to give you guys some hope that there is hope out there that you guys can come hang with Dallas and San Francisco in a couple of years. And, and we look forward to it. We really do because I think I think the NFL is better when the Falcons are playing well. And plus, I mean, I'd love to have us come here to play a playoff game so we could go there and watch, you know, watch my team or your team beat them. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'd, I'd be down for a field trip. That that would sound very good. But there's a lot of fun games coming up this weekend, and we're going to jump right into them. We're going to start with the Saturday game. Uh, normally the first game on Saturday and first game on Sunday are kind of the, the – uh, you kind of get dumped on if you get those games because it's like TV saying, we're not sure you're going to be the best game, but um, – the first game out of the out of the gate, we get the Browns going to Houston to face. Who knew they were going to win their division? The Houston Texans. That was a wild division. Four thirty NBC game. Uh, yeah, I thought Jacksonville had it all along, and then Houston just kind of shoved them out of the way. Uh, C.J. Stroud, uh, Stroud, whatever is how you say his last name. If he doesn't win um, Offensive Rookie of the Year, they don't need to have have the award out. No, I, I agree. Uh, um, also, um. It's kind of funny about these two divisions. Um, you know, the uh, uh, AFC North, actually, every team in that division had over a 500 record, which is the first time since the merger that and it, since that's happened with all four teams in the division. And if you look at um, the Houston division, I mean, you had the Colts up there to the last second, Tennessee. I mean, it just all four teams in both divisions were in it the whole year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Man, you know, these two teams actually played each other the most recently as well. They played each other in week 16. Oh, I um, forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Cleveland beat them 36-22. So, I mean, so uh, I, you, I guarantee they're looking at that film. Guarantee that both teams are watching that. Cleveland's looking at it. Hey, what can we do to, um, to, to rep, you know, repeat what we did? And Houston's looking at it and it's like, what, what can we do different? Um. Just a little side note: uh, Cleveland against all playoff teams that's in here was four and three this year, and um, Houston's two and two. Ooh. So yeah, so I mean, it's 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 gonna be an um, I think it's gonna be a honestly, man. I feel like Cleveland surprised me more that they're in the playoffs than Houston. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> and, and, I mean, and the Browns are. I mean, 
you look at Houston and you go, hey, there, here's the rookie phenom, but, I mean, there's not a lot around him. Between the coaching up of uh, D'Amico Ryans, you know, that was a great hire. And between the coaching staff and C.J. Stroud just making people around him better. Uh, hey, are, Collins is a beast, dude. Yeah. That wide receiver, Nico Collins, wow. But then ahead, you look on, you no, you're good. But then you look on the other side and you get a Cleveland Browns team that's on like the fifth quarterback that they've started the entire year. And yet here they are in the first round of the playoffs. And Joe Flacco, yeah, don't adjust your strings, folks. He's Flacco. Still in the league. Joe Flacco is leading Flacco. this team into the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he um I think he needed this. This this is a new start, even though he did go to what he played for the Jets after he left the Ravens. Mm -hmm. And did did he go to the Colts? I thought he went to his couch, but it, it could be the Colts. Well, he did go to that's, he did go to his couch as well. That that's yeah, a pretty similar I he position. For two teams. Yeah, that's a pretty yeah, similar position. So I, I <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah. He yeah, he he went somewhere for like a minute. Maybe it was because he went from Baltimore, I think, to the Jets. The Jets to I mean, it was like the Colts or Tennessee or one of those teams or something. Yeah, yeah, it was it was and then and then but he he came off the couch and he's pulling a a a, a Kurt Warner almost. Yeah. I mean, and so he's, and, he's further look, in the this, playoffs than Aaron Rodgers. Legit, and this um this Cleveland defense is not a defense to, to, to sneeze at. This this no. team is their defense is really what has them where they're at. Yes, Flac Flacco's playing good offense, but man, this defense. Oh yeah, absolutely. They, beat, they gave they gave us our first loss. Yeah, and it, that was kind of surprising to me too. But that's when. That's when the ears and the radar perked up at that point. And I was like, I got to pay attention to this Browns team. Maybe they got something. So who you got? I think this still, it's probably going to be the second or third best game all weekend. I just I feel like these two are just going to – it's either going to be a pinball war that they're just going to light the scoreboard up, or I, I think, it, you know, it could, be a, it could be a 14 to 13 or something like that. Man, I, I want to go with Cleveland, but – C.J. Stroud, it pains me to talk great about Ohio State players, but <laughs> I, I got to give him his due. That that I didn't think he was going to be the best quarterback in this draft, and he might be a top five quarterback in the league right now. Give me the Texans only because they're He's at home, playing. and I th I think they have the better quarterback. Who you got? I agree with the better quarterback. Um. I feel like Houston. There's another team I'm going to say this about later, uh, but I feel like Houston is is playing. We have nothing to lose. Ball. They, they, they're like, who expected us to be here? So we're going out here. Uh, I'm going to go with Cleveland only because I think I think Cleveland's defense it might be too much for um, that rookie quarterback. Uh, but if Houston wins, I won't be surprised. But I'm going to say Cleveland. I'm taking Cleveland in this one. Um, I just feel like that defense steps up. All right, and then uh, we move on to a game that should be one of the best games of the weekend, but I really think it's not going to be, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain why. Uh, we get the Miami Dolphins, who limped their way into the playoffs. I, I don't know what happened. Did the, the, the wheels come off that bus pretty quickly, or somebody drained all the water out of the tank or something? I'm not sure. Uh, but they're going to go to Kansas City to face Patrick Mahomes. Yep, they Kansas City right back in it. You can say they're they're better or worse this year, but they're right back in it. That's the 8 p.m. primetime Peacock game. Peacock sneaks in and grabs a couple of these games, and and uh, I'm thank goodness I have Peacock so I can watch that. But uh, what are you thinking about this game? Um, this is what's funny about this. Um, <laughs> these literally are two teams that strictly got into the playoffs because they beat bad teams. And what I mean by that is Miami – is one in five against playoff teams. Ooh. Kansas City is one in four against playoff against playoff teams. Kansas City's only win against a playoff team this year was Week Nine against this Miami team, the only <laughs> team that they beat. So wow. and and so yeah 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 so um and wow, Miami they, beat Dallas. I was about so to say they, Miami beat y'all. They deserve each other then. That's what's happening. Yes yes. So that's what I'm saying. That's why I don't know. You don't know what Kansas City team you're going to get. You don't know what Miami team you're going to get. No. Um, this could literally be the worst game or the best game. Um, and it's only, and I only say the best game because it could be a close game. Like you don't – it could go back and forth. Um, I think a big thing that that not too many people are really talking about and I think that's really going to push 
about to say my pick, Miami over in this one, mm -hmm. is Tyreek Hill's going to want to show out. He's going to want to – He, I mean, what, what would be better than to put your team out? If Tua can get him the ball, I see him putting over 200 yards receiving. He might even throw some rushing in there just to show, hey, guys, this, this is what you get for not bringing me back. This is why – and really – um, Mahomes hasn't hasn't had a, a wide receiver all year. He's missing Tyreek. He's missing Tyreek bad. And even when so, he gets a good receiver, he can't line up correctly. So, <laughs> sorry, not like sorry that. about that one. Yeah, just, yeah hey, I mean, hey, yeah, yeah. So, hey, I mean, so, um, yeah, man, this is this is a wild, this is a wild game. I never. When I was doing my little notes, that's why I'm, I'm overlooking my notes. When I was doing them, I was like, man, one and five, one and four. It's crazy that these two. It's wild. Yeah. I mean, at this point, do you do you say if, if they end up tying after regulation, they're both out? If they was to do that, I'd be okay with it. <laughs> I mean, that's it's like the pro wrestling rule where if you're doing a, a bracket format, you're doing a king of the ring or something like that. And somebody goes to a time limit draw. It's like, are you both out, or you, or double disqualification? Do you just you just somebody skips over and goes to the next round? I mean, I'm okay with that. It's yeah, yeah. It's almost be. I mean, all right. I'm gonna if, let you go if, first on this one. <laughs> I was gonna say if I was gonna say it, if Miami does get past Kansas City here, which I'm like I said, I'm gonna pick Miami. Um, even though it's real hard, it's real hard to pick against uh, Mahomes. But I'm gonna go Miami. If once again, I'm going back to back um, away teams. That's why that's wild. <laughs> if Miami does, they lose the next round. I'm I'm saying it. Baltimore will, will beat the brakes off of Miami. Um, maybe. But if um, but I see if KC gets past this first round, they're gonna give. Another here's another sneak peek to my neck. One of my other picks. They're gonna give Buffalo a hard time because, but then we'll get we'll get to that later. But yeah, I'm going I'm going Miami. I'm going Miami over Kansas City. I feel like Tariq gets his um his payback. This is this is uh the contest between two quarterbacks that uh, majority of the time that I count them out, they uh, smash me in the face with with great days, but nice. there's there's one that's I mean. You look at one side, and I want to give credit to Miami. I, I like Miami. I have, uh, Tua was my fantasy quarterback in two different leagues. Uh, he didn't start every week. I was smart enough not to do that. But I was about to say, good move. Yeah, I had uh, Jalen Hurts was uh, also on that team. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I feel sorry for you. Yeah, yeah. Some rough I hope weeks. you started the right ones on the right weeks. Majority of the time, but two sixth-place finishers should tell you exactly how that went. <laughs> <laughs> Made the playoffs and bowed out in the first round, just like uh, one of these teams is going to. Um, Patty Mahomes, Kelsey, Andy Reid, they've done it hard so many to, times. Yeah, I hard just, to bet against. Uh, I am more okay betting on them and being wrong than betting against them and being wrong. So I'm taking the Chiefs. So for the first – I rarely pick home teams, and I went home team, home team, and I think you barely pick away teams, and you went away. I don't, yeah. Yeah, and that's what's crazy. That's why I'm looking here. I'm like – and I'm I'm even – even with us talking here, I'm thinking, should I switch to Kansas City here? Should I switch to – you know. But I'm sticking with the Cleveland. And I'm going to stick with Miami just because I want my homes out of there because he did beat my team in the Super Bowl. Yeah. I'll give you that one. So let's move on to the next one. We are finally to Sunday. This is, yes. this is the Pittsburgh, how did we get here, Steelers against the Buffalo. We backdoored our way into Bills. Uh, one o'clock on CBS, that tells you that the NFL and all the TV networks know that, hey, CBS, you get a game, but we think this is going to be the stinker. This is the one nobody's going to tune in to watch. I disagree. These are two big markets. Um, I think it – I'll be honest. It comes straight down to – it comes straight down to – uh, what quarterback Pittsburgh trots out there because uh, they've had four or five this year and none of them have been that amazing. Uh, at one point, what, Trubisky's been there and, and all these other guys. And then Buffalo seemed to wake up when they were almost eliminated and they've won like four, five, six in a row since almost being eliminated. They had to win out to make it this far. So it really is going to come down to who wants it more. Uh, I'll kind of turn it over to you and then I'll throw a pick out there. Um, 
So here's here's the thing. I, you look at this on the on, on from the from the broad, and you're like, Buffalo is by far the better team. Buffalo against these playoff teams is five and one. They've only lost one game against all the playoff team, the teams that's in the playoffs, and that one game was against uh, Philly, who is not the Philly team that they were then. No. On the other side, which this really surprised me once again, I was doing my little doing my little note stuff thing and everything. And I, I seen some very odd stuff. Pittsburgh five and three against these playoff teams. Wow. Baltimore. They swept Baltimore. Baltimore did not beat them this year. This is the number one, the number one team. Also, they split with Cleveland. Get another, you know, I'm so they, they were in the, the toughest division. Mm-hmm. Uh, the teams that did beat um, Pittsburgh that are in the playoffs were Houston and San Francisco. So Buffalo's going to win. I'm not even, I'm not even going to entertain Pittsburgh winning. Um I don't even think this is going to be a close game. Um like you said, Buffalo did backtrack in. They had to win. Um I think Josh Allen's on a mission. Um especially the way Buffalo started off. They started off – people were starting to question, is Josh Allen a elite quarterback in the beginning of the season? People were questioning what's going on. Um, it's going to be – I'm jumping way ahead here. It's going to be Buffalo in the AFC Championship game. They're going to beat Pittsburgh. They're going to beat Kansas City, and they're going to play whether it's going to be Cleveland, Houston, or Baltimore. Um, yeah, I like that. I, I, I mean, that's, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going way ahead of myself there. <laughs> I just feel like, I feel like um, Buffalo is. Uh, they're going to take this game easy. If if they lose here, then I don't know, dude. They're they're out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they probably get a new head coach. I'll just say that if Buffalo loses, you know what? That is yes. If they, I, I agree. There are ten percent. There are a couple teams I think are staring that down, and they some of them know it, some of them don't. I want to agree with you, but for mm-hmm. one, I'm trying to I stop. Like that. A, I'm trying to stop a trend for one. <laughs> And you I'm, said you got to go with an away team. I'm looking at the rest of the games, and I'm like, man, I'm about to be heavy on one side. Uh, I don't know. It, like I said, it depends on which Pittsburgh quarterback it is out there, but they have found weird ways to win with all different quarterbacks. They find these weird, quirky ways to play Pittsburgh Steeler football. They control you on defense. They keep the score real low. They find a way to kick a field goal with, like, two seconds left. Those kind of things. I think they're going to find some weird way to to beat Buffalo in Buffalo. Maybe it snows really bad and that messes things up. I mean, it could. It, there's going to be some weird quirky thing, and I just for somehow think Pittsburgh's going to win. I like that. I disagree with it, but I like it. <laughs> Partially disagree with it, but like I said, I, I see a trend coming. So you're you're me you're me on the Miami Kansas City game right now. That's yeah. what you are. You're yeah. like you're like I feel like. That team can win. Yeah, yeah. I understand that. Who do I want to win? Buffalo. Who do I think is going to win? Pittsburgh. Some weird way. But uh, last few minutes of the show, we're going to have to hurry. Uh, Okay. Next next game. My bad. uh, I'm doing all the talking. No, no, no. It's it's probably me. But (laughs) either way, it's all good content. Uh, Right. The Green Bay Packers. This this has got more juicy storylines than WWE on a Monday night. The Green Bay Packers yes. are going to travel to Dallas to face their former coach as he now coaches the Dallas Cowboys. That is a 430 Fox game. I'm going to let you start because you probably have an idea where I'm going with it. No, I already know, yeah, and you, you, you're you not going to like where I'm going with it. I, uh, remember I said <laughs> – I can make a case said, for them too. I said Houston was one of those teams has nothing to lose. Green Bay is in it, has nothing to lose. Who expected Green Bay to be in the playoffs? Nobody. Jordan Love is playing uh, lights out. Um, I feel like da- Dallas doesn't lose at Dallas, but Green Bay's never lost at AT&T. They're 5-0 and at AT&T. And I don't know if you knew that. Yeah. Green Bay's 5-0. and Green Bay wins this game. Green Bay wins this game. They go into Dallas. They beat, they beat the Cowboys. It causes um, your head coach to get fired. I do agree. This if that a- happens – 
yeah, this is one of those teams that if they lose in the first round, maybe even the second round, they're getting a new coach. That's you got me, bud. I mean, like I said, Green Bay is three and three against these playoff teams. Dallas is three and four. Dallas could easily have been two and five if that Detroit game wouldn't have happened like it did. I'm just, yeah. That that was that was um, to make up for the fact we should have beat Miami the week before. Okay, I can understand that. that, I can, that I can, you know what? That's how that balanced out. I, I, I okay. I, I you know I can agree to that. I can agree to that. But I got I got Green Bay, bud. Green Bay. I, I got a homer out on this one. It's it's Dallas. Oh, of course you do. I, I, I don't think, doubt. I'm not saying we'll do it next round. Uh, not saying I, I, we'll see. But I do like what Green Bay did. I think they showed everybody that they're still the old Green Bay. Uh, they're a slightly different team with Jordan Love. Jordan Love is playing out of his mind, as you said. I love to see when that happens. Everybody counted him out and was like, just just follow along behind me. Watch what I'm about to do. I do think this is going to be possibly one of the best games, not because my team is in it. I just feel like I, a, a, I hungry, agree. a hungry I agree. Green Bay team and a Dallas team that knows we can't afford another first-round loss. We're not the Maple Leafs. We, we can't keep bowing out in the first round and expect to, to you know, keep jobs and things like that. So this is going to come down to some crazy – it's probably going to come down to whoever has the ball last. And I hope for everything that uh, being a lifelong Dallas fan has been that it is us and that McCarthy remembers how to manage a clock. I don't think he does. But other than that, I got Dallas I, like 31-27. It might be 30-27, something like that. They're going to both put up a lot of points. I think it's going to be a close game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Next, we're going to keep it moving. The, yeah, keep it moving. I'm with you. The L.A. Rams, there's here's way more. We're knee-deep in stories here, too. The L.A. Rams, who swapped quarterbacks with the Detroit Lions a couple years ago. Well, these two teams are now going to play each other in Detroit, 8 p.m. NBC, because they know this is going to be the best primetime game, possibly. Uh, I will go ahead and throw it out there. I like what the Rams did. I forgot they were even winning games this year until I realized they snuck in as like a wild card or what, whatever position they got. And... Uh, I knew they put up good numbers. Didn't really realize how good they were doing. Uh, I know you were keeping an eye on them. But give me Jared Goff in the ultimate how-do-you-like-me-now moment. Detroit wins this game at home. I'm going to agree with that. Detroit does win, but only because I disagree with everything you said about the Rams. <laughs> uh, the Rams beat bad teams. They against did. playoff teams, they were 2-6. and six. And I say they were 2-6 and six with quotation marks because – um, that last game of the year against us, they played our backups. Um, and it was, they won 21 to 20 because our kicker, which I'm very worried about, uh, missed two field goals. So, um, the Rams will lose this game. There's, there's no if ands, or buts about it. Yeah. Shout it's, out. it's a lion's win right here. Shout out to, uh, University of Michigan alone. Uh, Mr. Moody there, I believe that does all your kicking. Yeah, I'm going to need him to start kicking through the uprights and not to the right of him. He, he really yeah. should have been in, in the ACC and not the Big Ten. But uh, so we both got to Detroit. We finally agreed on one. So let's go to the yeah. last one. And the last thing, we got about four and a half minutes left. <sighs> let's go to the Monday night game. We, we, we can get in there. Well, we can. The Monday night game. Yeah, we can. The, the Philadelphia Eagles, or at least the people masquerading as them for the last month and a half, are going to Tampa to face the fighting Baker Mayfields. Shout out to that guy. Imagine what happens when you actually support a decent quarterback. He has a pretty, pretty good Pro Bowl like year almost. This is the 815 ABC ESPN and of course ESPN plus game. Where are you going with it and who you like? Dude, it's a toss up. Um Philly literally back, you know, backpedaled into the playoffs. Tampa Bay, um, lucky for them, had an easy schedule at the end of the year where they did have to win out, but they pretty much kind of did win out, which got them in the playoffs against playoff teams. The Tampa Bay's one in five. Um, their only win was against Green Bay. Uh Philadelphia was six and two. Uh one of those six wins was actually this Tampa Bay team back in week three when they beat them 25-11. Um, I'm still going Tampa Bay. I, 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 Philly's done. Uh, I'd be surprised if that head coach is not fired after this game, after this loss as well. Um, yeah, man, uh, Philly, even if Philadelphia does win this game, they're done in the, the second round. But the, the only reason they even have a chance is because this Tampa Bay team is came out of that weak division. Well, it's because they're Tampa and they find a way to Tampa a lot of times. And it's that's 
I used to like them quite a bit when they had uh, Gruden as the coach and, and a little bit into that, so I followed them a lot. I never liked them with Brady. Yeah, understandable. I'm a big Brady fan, but yeah, I, I wasn't a big uh, I wasn't a big of course uh, you are. Tampa Bay fan. But yeah, I'm Tampa Bay. I gotta agree. I guess we're gonna agree on the last two games because uh, I th- <laughs> like I said, Philadelphia is just an absolute shell. It amazes me that they have enough people healthy to put on enough uniforms to play every week. <laughs> it's 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 just they're they're almost uh just a, a walking. I don't know, a Walking Dead remake or something like that. Like, every time you look, somebody else is dinged up and missing practice. And for some reason, like I said, when you support somebody like Baker Mayfield and you give him, a, a, a you know, a decent career around him, I'm not saying they're world beaters, but I just feel like they got something to prove and, and Baker's going to put win number one on the board in Tampa like that. And that's I hate that it's going to happen on Monday night, but I don't hate that it's going to happen to the Eagles. I feel like Tampa wins this game. They have a chance in the next round. If Philly wins this game, they don't. And exactly. that's just how I feel. I feel I, I'm, so I'm with you on that. And just to recap, that is the third team we mentioned that if they lose this round, will probably lose their head coach. And that's that's not speculation. I would be willing to bet on at least two of those three. I'm with you. I'm with you. But Love it. We got through all the games. Uh, I got a couple minutes left. So once again, I want you to plug your YouTube, and then we will get out of here. Just uh, Daniel Snyder, I think it's 8361 or 8631. I don't know, man. But you you'll, you guys just look up Call of Duty streaming Daniel Snyder. You'll find me. Um, yeah, I got like 100, fo- uh, 100 people that follow me. I'm just trying to grow. You start with one. Exactly. So. And, of course, everybody that, uh, depending on where you find this show, I think it's Impact underscore Media underscore is uh, the channel we use on YouTube. We're on all the social medias. Uh, if there's if if you just can't find us, find anywhere the show is. Drop me a line, and I'll I'll all but drop it off at your house. The link if you really want it. It's it's not that hard. Hey, if you want to do this next week, I'm down to do it next week, bud. We can do this Thursdays. I'm I'm good when you're good. Hey, sounds like we're gonna do this again next week, guys. So hopefully you Love guys it. enjoy it. Make sure to tell all your friends. Tell your friends to tell your friends that Daniel and Jeremy are talking about the NFL playoffs and uh, for my good buddy Daniel Snyder. I am Jeremy the Impact York. We will see you guys next Thursday. Deuces, gooses.